Welcome to this week's episode of the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast. We are smack center in the middle of the IPL. This week has been all about drama, drama, and more drama. We've seen teams batting first and winning. We've seen Rishabh Pant trying to pull off an MS Dhoni, but not really getting onto the pitch himself. And then where I got confused is because last week, Josh Butler and KL Rahul hit a century. And this week, Josh Butler and KL Rahul hit a century. So I, I, I'm kind of confused on where we are in the tournament. But Ashwin, how are you feeling? Yeah, I was quickly looking through what you said right in the center. And it actually has been, it's a 74 match IPL. And at the time of recording this, 37 are completed. So exactly 50%. And yeah, not only last week did KL Rahul hit a century, KL Rahul hit a century against the Mumbai Indians, both last yeah. week and this week. So some things just keep happening yeah. over and over again. Yeah, like Mumbai Indians losing eight on the trot. I mean, we'll talk about all of this, but Ashwin, eight on the trot, like what is happening in that camp right now? It, I mean, it's okay to keep saying that this is a new squad, which he said in the toss as well, but what is happening? It's just ridiculous, right? Nobody's been able to find form. They keep playing the same players over and over again. You can look at, and again, it sounds silly because after one or two bad games, we keep saying, you got to back your 11, give them time, all those things. But after eight, or let's call it six or seven in a row, you got to try something different, right? Pollard is just not working lower down the order. It just it doesn't it just doesn't seem to be clicking for them. I picked on Pollard, but Kishan, after starting strong, looked so scratchy. It just everything seems to be falling apart, and I think a lot of it is linked to Rohit Sharma. He he looked good at the beginning of today's innings and in the the chase against the Lucknow Super Giants, and as soon as he went got out, it seemed like it fell apart. So, yeah, I mean, entertaining for us who are non Mumbai fans, but but a little disappointing for the quality of the league this year, honestly. Yeah, it's it's a bit uh, surprising. You're not used to this. Uh... No team has ever lost eight on the trot. And I think that officially puts them out of the IPL, um, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, it, it's shocking. Nobody could have predicted this. Yeah, we'll talk about it at the end. I think the only team that had a worse run in the last couple of weeks than Mumbai Indians was my fantasy team. Yeah. So it's been it's been rough, man. It's been it's been very tough. Well, you have only yourself to blame because <laughs> one of us did give the tip. I can't, maybe it was me. Then start looking at the uh, orange and purple cap because those guys will consolidate and cement. And three Ashwin, Butler centuries I have missed out on. And two Rahul. I think uh, I had century. one Rahul century. Or maybe, no, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, and it's a partridge been... and a pear tree. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. The first match was last Monday. Rajasthan Royals versus KKR. Honestly, I think one of probably the best games of the season. This is that um, that Joss Butler century that we keep referring to. 103 of 61. I think he just went ballistic. Everyone on the other end was just watching him bat. Um, and so no, we don't need to deep dive too much. It's just, look, when somebody's in this purple patch, I think what I liked about Joss Butler century is that sometimes he starts off a little bit slow. Um, and he hits the ball so cleanly that it actually does not matter. Um uh, you know, it does not matter whether it's a power play or not. So it's a it's an interesting lesson, right? Everyone keeps talking about these stats on power play, but Josh Butler, it just doesn't matter. He ended up with a strike rate of 170. I think the other one to call out, and I'm going to, why I'm calling this out now is because I'm going to reference it later as well. Sanju Samson comes in at three after this start. And honestly, <clears throat> he has only one role now, right? Which is to go at a 200 plus strike rate. And he did exactly that, 38 of 19 balls. KKR, I mean, I think they pulled it back a little bit. They, we were, At one stage, we were expecting to 230, 240, uh, but they did pull it back. Now, the KKR chase, they, were, they, they needed 218 to win. Aaron Finch, who Ashwin seems to love to trump, actually did come out and do extremely well. So kudos to him, man. I wasn't expecting that. 58 of 28 balls. And Shreyas Iyer, 85 of 51. This was a captain's knock if there ever was one. And yet, they still fell short because apart from Shreyas Iyer's 50, 85, you then look at Russell, zero of first ball. And Ashwin's delivery was just brilliant. I think the highlight of this match. Venki Iyer, Ashwin, let me just, you know, everyone below that got single digits. But Venki Iyer, what's happening? Is this now the clarity of role issue that we've been always talking about, that we were so happy that KKR has given him in the past? 
Yeah, I think exactly that. You, exactly what you said. He has gone several matches, if I'm not mistaken, without batting or bowling, and so you could argue it's chicken and egg. Which came first? Did he start losing his form and then started losing responsibilities, or did he lose responsibilities and then the form followed? It's just disappointing. Like he, gosh, he was DJ's pick for the orange cap holder, and he's nowhere close. I don't even think he's batted nearly enough to get there. So disappointing. Obviously, everybody's allowed a rough patch of form, especially after the breakthrough season he had last year, but. I'm really hoping, you know, Shreya Sayer can find him a little bit more clarity of role so that he's just a little more confident. Very disappointed. Yeah, again, come back to when you start opening with Narayan, you start focusing on those power play stats. And uh, I mean, yes, he's done well, but overall, I would say 80% of the time he's not done well. So you really, you really need to think about uh, your team structure and whether you want Shreya Sayer coming in in the first over regularly, right? Um, so, so that was the first match. I know hard break for KKR fans because Rajasthan Royals won by just seven runs. But, um, but yeah, KKR now needed to find that form, and we'll talk about the next game in a little bit. Ashwin, why don't you run us through the can, next game? Can we take one second? I know we're we're short on time, and shout out Yuzvendra Chahal for that magnificent oh, yeah. hat trick. Just five for forty, an incredible hat trick. It looked at one point like the game was was done. Right at one point, I think, you know, it, it, Yomesh was hitting a little bit. Yeah, Yomesh ended up at 21 of 9. It looked like, despite them not being able to do it, it looked like they were going to. And then Chahal bowls the over of all overs and ends up getting uh, a hat-trick at a total of 5-4. Does this great celebration where he runs and then lies down uh, on his side, like the meme that of him that became so popular. And it was just great to see. So, full, full marks to Chahal there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think there was a stat that said before Chahal's over... The win probability for KK was 67 odd percent. After Chekhov's over, it dropped to 9 percent. That was the impact. Talk about an impactful over. But unbelievable. I will go ahead and talk about the next game, which was the Lucknow Super Giants versus the Royal Challengers Bangalore. It's a little hard to talk about this game because since this game happened, Bangalore have played another game where they didn't do quite as well. But this was a, an excellent Bangalore win, especially batting first. So Bangalore came out there, made 181. Really, a couple of things to highlight. Faf Duplessis, phenomenal. Started a little slow, as he has done recently. Ended up with 96 of 64. Just one of those knocks where you deserved a century, but perished on the penultimate ball of the innings, on the second last ball. And, you know, we were hoping you'd get that boundary to make 100, but 96 uh, in a winning cause, you'll take that any day. Varun, I'm sure you want to talk about it, but the former Indian team all-format skipper, Virat walks in at three, gets a first ball duck which, of course, then proceeded to happen for two matches in a row. So he's obviously not himself. But, yeah, not a lot to write home about in the Lucknow innings. Rahul got a little bit of a start. Krunal came in at four, which I think is interesting. I think DJ is not on this week's show, but I would be remiss if I didn't try to represent him to say, what on earth is Manish Pandey doing at three? That at this point, just just drop him. Just get rid of him. Bring in Manan Vora. Bring in something. Bring in somebody new. But Manish at three has just failed miserably for Lucknow. And, you know, they got close thanks to some heroics from Stoinis, who looks like he would, looked like he was going to do it near the end. Felt very, very hard done by a wide uh, on in the last over, I think it was, in the 19th over. Hazelwood bowled. Uh, it looked like it should have been called wide. It wasn't called wide. And then the, he got out the next ball. So disappointment for, for Stoinis. But yeah, great, great in bowling innings by Hazelwood. Four for 25, won them the game. Uh, and just overall, uh, a good win for the RCBC. Yeah, absolutely. And Hazelwood has just been great since that last season with CSK and the T20 World Cup. So, um, actually, RCB looks like a very balanced side. And keep that in mind, because we're going to be discussing them again a little, in a little bit. Against Sunrisers, who we said did not look balanced. Yeah. I mean, we when, when we come to the Sunrisers game, I think we have to publicly acknowledge that uh, we were wrong. Okay? Like, we will acknowledge that, guys. So, any Sunrisers fans listening... Stay tuned because you're going to hear a public apology from me and Ashwin. But uh, let, let's move to the next game. Now, I said drama. I said a lot of drama because this week also IPL had its first COVID scare, right? Mitch Marsh was hospitalized due to COVID. I think apart from Mitch, there were three other support staff in the Delhi Capitals unit that got COVID. And so all the players were isolating in their rooms. Apparently, Punjab had reached the stadium, uh, which was rescheduled. So, Punjab reached the stadium in Mumbai. And we're not sure if Delhi Capitals were going to make it or not. 
every player did a test, uh, I think an ART or a PCR test, and then were allowed on the bus and made it to the ground. As Delhi Capital fan, we had no idea who would show up. We had no idea who would play, but they managed to somehow get it. And I have to give credit for their character here, right? Because it's not easy being hit by COVID. Um, a lot of us were worried about whether this means the tournament ends, etc. I think um, the, the BCCI changed the rules this time to state that basically, if you can field 11 players, you will go ahead. And so Delhi did just that. They fielded their best 11. Um, and, and luckily, it was, it, was, it was pretty close to what they've been playing so far. But the mental state was not the same. Punjab comes out and Punjab has got this now go-getter kind of approach. From the first ball, they just, uh, they, they're just going for it. Jitesh Sharma has been the highest scorer. So that should put it in some perspective on what their batting lineup did. They got all out for 115. And I mean, all the Delhi bowlers, barring Shardul Thakur, did a great job, right? Um, they all had an economy of somewhere between 2.5 in Akshar's case to about five and five and a half, six. Um, Kuldeep was the man of the match with two wickets uh, in four overs for 24. But at the same time, he also came out and said he thinks Akshar should have gotten it. Um, so fantastic bowling performance by Delhi. And then they came out to bat and it looked like a completely different pitch. So Punjab made 115. Delhi was chasing 116. Prithvi Shaw and David Warner suddenly put on a show that got all of us excited because at the end of the auction, this is what we were looking forward to. They came out and won the game in 10.3 overs. And that essentially was fantastic for Delhi's net run rate. So um, the game was pretty much done halfway through the second innings. Delhi took those much needed points and at the same time jumped even today uh, as the points table as the highest net run rate. So I think the the game was really valuable from that perspective. Yeah, and right? just great to see Kuldeep, right? Kuldeep, just after the day, Chahal picked up a five for Kuldeep, only got two, but it was magnificent. Two wickets um, late, in the, late in the match and just nice to see him continuing his good form. Absolutely. So th that was the first three. Ashwin, why don't you walk us to the next game and then we'll take a, a quick break. Yeah, this was the bottom of the table clash. El Clasico or lots of different nicknames that were a family-friendly show, so I won't say on air. But Mumbai Indians took on the Chennai Super Kings. And yeah, a lot of people were just disappointed that Chennai had won one game, Mumbai had won zero. And obviously there were two points up for grabs here. So one of them was going to walk away with the points. But but I, you know, transparently, I still expected a fantastic game. You could argue a last ball finish... Is still pretty exciting on the end, but I have to put out there that it was pretty bad cricket, right? So the scorecard reads Mumbai in zero for one in the second ball of the innings. Rohit Sharma basically saying anything Virat can do, I can do better. With uh, Virat's first ball duck, Rohit got a second ball duck. And uh, then a couple of balls later, Ishan Kishan out two for two. <clears throat> 23 for 3, 47 for 4. Surya Kumar looked like he was going to do as well, ended up with 32. Honestly, don't forget the drop catches. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it was just, I remember messaging you about it. It was during a work day for me, so I didn't get to watch it. But it said Jadeja dropped. Then I think it said Dhoni missed stumping. Then it said Jadeja drops again. Maybe a third one. And then, I, and then it said Bravo drops. So it's like all the guys who feel well are suddenly dropping. And it was just it just ended up being such a poor quality of cricket, right? From the two most decorated sides in the history of the IPL. It was really just disappointing. I mean, full credit to this youngster, Tilak Varma, for making another half century looking good. But it is so telling that Mumbai Indians batting order is revolving around a guy like Tilak Varma, who none of us had knew much about going into this IPL. And he's the only guy that seems to be playing consistently. Hrithik Shaukeen came into this match. Can I take a minute, Varun, and just tell you a fun fact about Hrithik Shaukeen? He yeah, was I, born in August of 2000. Wow. Kahona Pyare, Hrithik Roshan's <laughs> debut was in January of 2000. So if you're sitting there thinking, his parents probably realized they were expecting a child around about the release date of Kahona Pyare. Like, I'm willing to bet they immediately decided that because they loved the movie. They were gonna well, what a debut it was. And I was, I was sitting with my wife on the previous day and she saw... Shah Rukh Khan on screen. And then 
she was sitting again the next day and she saw resting on his feet and I had to explain to her that all these kids have been born around 97 to 2000 which is why these names are coming up I'm now waiting for Hrithik Shakhi to bowl to Shahrukh Khan what a great moment that's going to be <laughs> right so Mumbai ended up getting 155 Very, very generous, let's be clear, that by uh, the Chennai fielders, as you mentioned, to get them there. Mukesh Chaudhary picked up three early wickets. So all three top order batsmen went to him. And then what looked like it should have been an easy case, uh, easy chase, Mumbai was zero for one in two balls. Chennai said, we're going to be zero for one in one ball, uh, with Guy Quad getting out on the first ball uh, of Daniel Sam's over in the match. Um, Othappa put up a decent chase. Raidu put up a decent chase. But it came down to... the man who has finished so many games for his team whether it was in in blue for his country or yellow for his franchise at the end of the match Dwayne Pretorius and MS Dhoni of course were standing at the crease and Pretorius looked good did some good hitting MS Dhoni ends up you know what does he need he needs 16 runs off the last four balls hits a 6 hits a 4 gets 2 needs 4 off the last ball and just gets a low full toss dhoni you know uses his feet well and hits it down for four and dhoni walks off the field having won on the last ball should it have been a last ball thriller absolutely not both sides probably played as though they deserve to not win shout out to daniel sams for his four for 30 but unad cut again got given the 20th over lots of strategy questions should you have given him the 19th Do the, does does Mumbai have the depth to defend low totals from their boulders? Probably not. But CSK came up victorious and Mumbai still without a win in this year's IPL. Yeah, the, these last ball finishes are just becoming a thing with MSD. I kind of think if there's a way for him for the next 10-15 years to just come in in the last over um, of, of the innings for the next 10 years in IPL and just, just bat 5 ball, 6. Just ball, as a 55-year-old walking in in the yeah, point just, two and just finishing games. Yeah. Just like 15 minutes of three and, and that's it. Speaking of last ball finishes, we're going to take a break and then come back and talk about one of the best matches, I think, in the IPL so far. So we'll be back after this short break. Hey, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On The Habit Coach, Ashton talks to Avantika Sinha, managing partner, leadership trainer, and coach at Stillwater Consulting. She shares five key mindsets that we all must imbibe in ourselves. The Simplified Gang look into the European Union's recent regulations to rein in tech companies. On The Filter Coffee Podcast, Karthik speaks with author Vasanthi about her new book, Ganga's Choice. On The Life Manifesto, Zarina decodes seven overrated concepts that we must do away with. And on football twaddle, Saru and Yash discuss how Arsenal always disappoints in the season. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Also, please don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on. And remember, you can always check us out on YouTube. We have a number of channels. You can go to ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube to take a look at what those channels are. We're also doing a small listener survey to understand how you respond to our shows and the advertising on the network. We would really, really appreciate it if you could spare a few minutes to fill it out. It really helps us build better shows for you and understand what you're looking for from advertising and what we can talk to advertisers about about who you are. Please go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It really, really, really would help us out. Thank you so much. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors for the network this week, SBI Life Insurance, India Water Portal, and Jupiter, a digital banking app. Thank you so much for making this possible. Welcome back from the break. I did say one of the best matches, but I have to carry it as a Delhi fan, one of the worst matches uh, to go through. Not just, not just because of the result, probably also because of that fair play award. which uh, which I haven't bothered to check after this game. By that, you mean by the fact that Delhi was cheated, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm just going out there and saying it. I'm not not holding back at all in this match. <laughs> we, were, we were cheated. Well, we will get into that, which is why I, we'll, we'll get into that. So we won't spend too much time on the game per se. But let me run you through that. And then, Ashwin, let's, let's talk through what happened after the third ball of the 20th over. Okay, I feel like I'm repeating myself. So if you guys want, you can just go back and rewind a little bit. So Josh Butler came out there, started a bit slow, then hit, hit the ball very cleanly and got to 100. I feel like if this snip can be just put into every week's episode, that'll, be, that'll, that'll save us a lot of time. 
he made 116 of 65 balls. Just atrocious. The kind of hitting he was doing. He took everyone to the cleaners. I mean, now I have to give credit here. Thakur is the only Delhi bowler who had an economy rate under 10, and he was 9.7. Um, it was just ridiculous. He just, like, Kuldeep went for almost 13 and a half and over. Padikal gave him great support, but honestly, when a guy next to you has made 116, you're only going to be um, playing second fiddle. And then again, Sanju Samson comes in in a role that is probably unique to him. He hits 46 of 19 balls. Now, remember, that innings is the one that actually probably won Rajasthan Royals the game because what happens with centuries in this kind of um, tournament and this heat staying out there that long is that whether it's KL Rahul or Josh Butler, they do slow down a little bit. So, you know, they... With, with the last three to four overs to go, if they are slowing down, you need the other guy to pick up pace. And Sanju Samson did that. 46 of 19. If you guys remember earlier, I mentioned 38 of 19. So this time he almost went at 250 strike rate. 222 for two. Um, mammoth total. I think most of us who was watching would have hoped that all Delhi can do is get close enough to protect that net run rate. And so Delhi comes out, Shaw and Warner, off to a good start, honestly. I mean, between them, 130 strike rate, 200 strike rate, they were doing everything they can. But you could see them trying to hit the ball a little hard. You could see them trying to slog a little bit because this total is just it's just too far. Pant comes in, 44 of 24. Lalit Yadav, 37 of 24. Akshar and Thakur, the two guys who can bat, have been sent ahead of Rovman Powell. Okay? Um... So, so it is, it is a situation where Powell is a hitter, but I think he has not been great for um, uh, versus spinners, and so that's why Delhi kept him uh, down a little bit. Now, the nineteenth over, Lalit Yadav, who looks in pretty good form, not only gets out, but the overall team plays a wicket maiden to Prasid Krishna. And so 36 needed of 12 balls is something you'd back a team in the IPL if you've got a hitter. Has now come down to 36 of 6 balls. We've seen this before of West Indian batting. <laughs> Roman Powell, first ball, 6. Massive 6. Second ball, 6. Third ball, 6. Off a full toss, which... Ashwin, now you take over and tell us kind of what happened, which we believe was a no ball. Walk us through what the commotion was. Yeah, so 18 needed off three. It still felt like a, a tall order. Let's be clear. Still felt extremely difficult. It was at 36 for six, I almost turned it off. And then it went six, 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 like you said, 18. Six. And then Rothman Powell gets a, a full toss that is at least a roundabout waist type. You know, that you could argue was slightly over. You could argue it was dipping. There's maybe different ways to argue it. I feel I felt it was very clear it was a, a roundabout or above waist height. And it's not called a no ball. And the Delhi team is is furious, right? Ravman Powell, Kuldeep, who's batting on the other end, is walking over to the umpires. They're all talking. Pant is at the boundary line. Let's be clear. The difference here would have been... Uh, sorry, that was, on the, that was on the third six. Let's be clear, right? So that third six... Uh, became 18 from three, it would have become 17 from four with a free hit. So he hits the third six on the third ball. It's not given a no ball. Big difference. Anybody who watches cricket knows. Big difference, 18 from three versus 17 from four with a, with a free hit. It's not given. It's not referred, which we obviously later realized it cannot be referred, which is what we'll talk. Rishabh Pant standing there, waving his boys back in, calling them back, saying, we're not going to play this game anymore. It's unfair. It's cheating. Yeah. We have to call out one one thing. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. Ricky Ponting is it's not there. in the stadium. Okay. Um, now, <laughs> Ricky Ponting is the master of doing nonsense in his life. So I don't know what would have happened, but sorry to cut you off, but go ahead. No, I, that's a great point. Ricky absolutely would have done something. Shane Watson as the assist, the new assistant manager was there. But anyway. Shapan tries signaling them back. They decide not to come back. It kind of the dust settled. At this point, you hear the commentators all saying the momentum he had from hitting three sixes in a row is completely gone. You've given the bowler a chance, Obed McCoy, a chance to reset, talk to his 
uh, captain, calm down a little. You've given the batsman the adrenaline has settled a little. Of course, didn't end up finishing it. And Delhi fans felt, you know, felt cheated. Felt like it got a little short. Again, 36 from 6 was always a tall ask. 18 from 3 also ended up being too much. But it's a big difference being 17 from 4. So Varun, two things, right? One, obviously the the decision to try to call the players back and eventually Praveen Amre, uh, Delhi, is, I think his assistant coach, ended up going onto the field, talking to the umps and coming off. Obviously not the right call. Um, you know, that's not the spirit of cricket. But I do want to say this is not the first time this has happened in the IPL. And it happened in 2019 with MS Dhoni in the last over. Or if you remember when the square leg umpire called a no ball, the uh, the main umpire, the first umpire didn't, and there was some chaos there. Dhoni walks on the field, protests. The sanctions for Dhoni, both from the cricketing, both from like media and fans like us, and of course the fine he was given later were nothing compared to what Pat got. So very important. Yes, it's been three years. Maybe rules have changed, but but maybe standards have changed. Excuse me. But when Dhoni did this in protest to a bad decision, it was treated very differently than when Pant, Pant, when Pant did. And then the second thing is just why can't you send a freaking waist high no ball to the third out? Like that feels like a rule that will change right after this IPL. It feels like the boundary count type of rule that hasn't been an issue enough that they changed it. But the third umpire is now checking every single ball for front foot. Just have him look at the the waste. It's not that he looked at it and deemed a certain way. He said he wasn't allowed to be referenced. So I'll stop talking then. No, it's, it's all very fair points. So to break it down, one, the the rule is such that you can't refer it. Okay. So it's a stupid rule, but that is the rule. Knowing that if you call your team off in the middle of a game, you pretty much forfeit the game. So we would have lost either way. Third, Calling the team off versus walking onto the field, I think, was the main difference uh, between Tony and uh, and and Praveen Ambre slash Pant. I think in this situation, so I think it got too heated. There was not that experience. I think actually walking onto the field, there's a precedence before. I think trying to call the players off is probably what the mistake was. Now. It's, what has happened has happened. I think we have to take the lesson for, for next time. What I want to know is, what was Shane Watson's view? Because he seemed pretty heated during that time. Was he trying to tell Pant, let it go? Or was he trying to tell Pant, we need to argue this? I don't know. That's something nobody knows. Because Shane Watson has come out looking like the hero after this and saying, this is not what Delhi stands for and, and things like that. So, it's... Um, yeah, I, I mean, overall, I think Delhi should have got that no ball but uh, the the reaction i think what what players fail to understand is that you can't change anything midway right um and that's what's that's what's difficult so difficult loss to digest honestly delhi just kept losing wickets at regular intervals and that caused it but it shows you that if you just stay in the game and keep scoring you could actually get close right so but but i also want to sh- shout out to powell right like a guy who has struggled this season came out and did that. And I hope we see more of him in going forward in the tournament because you're going to get more close games and you're going to need somebody like him to, to come out. I just, you know, with, with the likes of Kuldeep and Akshar in the um, in the net, I hope he sorts out his batting against spin because he does honestly look very lost there. Right? That was a lot to soak in, right, in that, uh, in that game. Let's move on to Saturday's games. Now, the first game was still decent. Uh, Gujarat versus KKR. Gujarat table toppers, Hardik Pandya back. I, I mean, I want to give 100% credit to Hardik Pandya. From being in a stage where all of us were like, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're not even bowling. You're not batting well. He's pushed himself up to number three. Equally, Shubman Gill has done nothing after the first innings. <laughs> He's just he's just not looking in form. But Hardik Pandya, he played a little bit of a anchor innings, which is not something you expect of him. He was defending the ball. He was scoring regularly, almost a boundary every over, and then taking the single. He got to 67 or 49. And ultimately, nobody else really provided him with that support. And when you look down, Miller, Tewatiya, Rashid Khan, these are all guys who probably come in a little bit later than, um, than one expects them to. But... Um, I think overall, I just want to give credit to Hardik Pandya. Now, come to the KKR innings. Their top order has been a mess. So, they're chasing 
157 to win in 20 overs. Honestly, I would have I would have put that down to KKR winning this game, right? Because they're they're not a bad side. But what what ended up happening is that again Billings and Narayan now open the innings with Ayer to follow. All of them just four, five, twelve. Nitish Rana not standing up again. Rinku Singh was drafted in so that he could balance the side because um, because uh, they they brought Southy in place of Pat Cummins. Russell came in forty eight, who by the way was the hero in the first innings because he bowled only one over. And he took four wickets. And I think majority of those were caught by Rinku Singh. So you heard Russell say later that I'm going to have to buy him dinner. Um, but but essentially, Russell comes out with a tall order. And just like the previous day, we saw Rovman Powell go for it. Russell hits 48 of 25 with six sixes and one four. Incredible innings. And you thought that you know he, he will probably get it and he will probably take them over the line. But... Just, just too much for KKR in the in the last couple of overs because they fell short. They got to only one forty eight for eight, and that put Gujarat Titans on the top of the table actually. And remember, they've only lost one game so far. So, fantastic innings. I think what was great to see is that Rashid Khan picked up wickets. So he's always been an effective bowler, but. For those of us who play fantasy, we know that picking him is not a great option because he doesn't usually pick wickets because batsmen are more uh, kind of uh, careful around him. But he picked up uh, Venkatesh Ayer and Shivam Mavi at crucial times, gave an economy of only 5.5. And I think he was the player of the match. So Yeah, he was two overs for 16. And yeah. then he bowled the 14th and the 16th overs. Crucial in a big chase like this. And ended up at four overs, two for 22. So he picked up two wickets and only gave six runs in his third and fourth over. That's just a game changer. Absolutely. So, so that was the first game on the Saturday doubleheader. The second game, actually, a lot of the a lot of my friends gathered at a, at someone's house to watch this match because you were like, it is going to be you know uh, uh, in Brabourne, which has been a high scoring ground. You're going to have Kohli, Faf, Maxwell all out there. And it was played on 23rd April. Now, Ashwin, I'm going to pass over to you, but you know what has happened on 23rd April in the past, right? Oh, I don't. Is there the date link with RCB's 49? Is that? Yeah. So 23rd April, no I think. No way, I didn't get that. I think they, 23rd April 2013 or so, they, they hit 263, the highest ever scored IPL. 23rd April 2017, they hit 49, the lowest ever scored the IPL. And they were playing on 23rd April again. Right. And Marco Janssen was bowling for the Sunrisers Hyderabad, who hadn't played a lot, maybe his second game. And gets the second ball, he gets the second over, gets the balls, you know, the second ball gets Faf Duplessis, who's in great form. Then we mentioned this spoiler alert earlier that Virat Kohli walks out, gets another first baller. And two balls later, gets Anuj Ravat out. Suddenly, Marco Janssen has bowled a three-wicket over getting RCB stuck at eight for three at the end of two overs. And they just couldn't recover. At that point, Maxwell came in, didn't at all change his game, started trying to hit hit a couple boundaries and then ended up getting out for 12, which is just not good enough. right? I get the role he's in to play, and that all makes sense when Faf and Virat are doing well, but just not good enough to not adjust your game. Probably this I made top scored with 15 off 20, and then all single digits from there on. Karthik couldn't get going, Harshal, Hasaranga, nobody could get going. Natarajan also finished with phenomenal figures, three for ten um, in just his, in his three overs, and yeah, Sunrisers Hyderabad not only used this as an opportunity to get a win, but as to get a big win, ending up with seventy two for one, but finishing it in just eight overs. So now they're sitting at the net run rate of plus point six nine one, which is just unbelievable after eight games. A lot thanks in large part to these huge victories they've got. So nine wicket victory. Nobody with RCB showed up with the ball, but you don't blame the bowlers when the batsmen get uh, 69, 68 all out. It's just not, nothing to fight for. So I feel bad for those who did gather to watch it because you were got, you were home in like an hour and a half, I think. Yeah, exactly. After getting like after saying I'll be home at like two in the morning, I showed up at twelve thirty back home. Um, but yeah, here's the public apology, guys. Like Sunrisers has proved us wrong. Uh, I, I'm not going to say that they play a very nice, aggressive brand of cricket because. Uh, that would be wrong on my part as well. But yes, no, but none of us give them a chance 
uh, when they lost two out of two in the start of the tournament, all of us were like, I told you so, and this is what we knew. But man, have they turned it around and how. They are like now in the reckoning for top four with the highest NRR at the midway mark. So even if things go a little bit haywire, they, they still have a shot. So I mean, 100% kudos to them. Very well done. Last game that we're going to cover on this week's episode, a repeat, as Ashin said, Lucknow versus Mumbai. A repeat of a KL Rahul masterclass. This time, though, he was shaking his head at the end of the innings because it all kind of looked too familiar in the past with his role at Punjab, where Rahul hit 103 of 62 balls and the rest of the team barely made, I would say, 60 Less than 60 runs if you take out extras. Okay. So the rest of the. So in that first Mumbai game, he made 103 of 60. So is it fair to say he's getting worse? Yeah, he's getting much worse, (laughs) especially when you look at what's happening around him. But the rest of the team didn't even make 60 runs. And the cock is just, he's just not finding form, right? Manish Pandey, actually, when he got out, the commentator said, This is really bad news for for Mumbai Indians. Because he's gone at 22 of 22. Stoinis also unsure. You know, Prunal Pandya did well but in, in the previous game. But nothing clicked for them. And so, ended up at 168. And you could almost see that as, Rohit, as Kale Rahul walked off, he kind of looked a little bit dejected because he said, Mumbai has to bounce back at some point. They are now playing in their home ground at Wankhede for the first time this season. Motivation level could not be higher. And 168, honestly, is subpar in my opinion. I mean, I think KL Rahul was hoping for a 180 and kind of didn't get strike in that last over. So outcome the Mumbai Indians, Kishan and Rohit. Rohit this time showing a lot of intent, got to 39 of 31. Kishan, same story, 8 of 20. And then the middle order this time, Brevis and Sky, just, just didn't click. It just... 10 runs between them, and that's where the game kind of turned. It was always going to be hard. Call out, special mention to Tilak Varma. Again, kind of, I, th- I think he's Mumbai Indians' highest run scorer, despite Sky's heroics um, in the tournament so far. And it just kind of went downhill from there. I mean, Krunal Pandya picked up three wickets at an economy of under five, and I think that, that really did it for them. But chasing 168... In Wankhede to lose by 36 runs, it just brings us back to how we started this uh, this week's episode. That it's just not going Mumbai Indians' way, and unfortunately, I think they're out of the tournament. So we've we're just going to have to watch and see whose party they spoil. Hopefully, it is um, not the Delhi Capitals, but it is. It's just it's just an unfortunate situation for them. That was the wrap on this week's episode. Quickly going through the points table, and I'll ask Ashwin if he wants to give a quick fantasy update. Gujarat Titans at the top, played 7, won 6, 12 points. Um, Hyderabad in second place at 10 points, Rajasthan third at 10 points, and Lucknow third, uh, fourth at 10 points as well. Now, like Ashwin mentioned, Sunrisers have got the highest run rate among the top four. You've got RCB in 5th, Delhi in 6th, with the highest net run rate overall. So, keep in mind that this is going to play a factor in the future. Some, I would say, only KKR in that bottom half of the table has played 8. And they've lost 3 on the trot now. So, they're going to have to pull up their socks. I believe this week's game on Thursday is Delhi versus KKR. So, that's always fun. And... Yeah, that's it from me, guys. Let's go to Ashwin, take a quick update on the fantasy, and we'll be back next week after that. Yeah, so I don't really want to have to do this one, but I will do it. So, Edges and Sledges Fan League is up to 171 players now. I'm not doing great. I've fallen a little, but that's just giving myself a little challenge, right? So, DJ among the three of us sits in 21st at 12,901. Varun, you're just behind him in 27th now at 12.505. And I had to scroll a fair bit to find myself at 52nd at 11.861. So I need a couple of good innings. I had Marco Janssen who helped me a little, but then, of course, didn't proceed to pick Rahul in his uh, his century. I think this is the final week where I'm going to have to say this, but number one in the Edges and Sledges League is a team called All Teams Below This Line Suck. So thank you for the, the laughs that entertainment as I've had to say your name, but 
what, 37 matches out of 70, and they have three transfers left. So they're basically done. It's going to start dropping. Wicked Sensation still right up there. Uh, very very well managed transfers uh, in second place. New teams popping up in the third and fourth. AJ Comrades and Ricky Ponting Bat Spring, just great names, all just great names. And rounding out the top five is KVR the Champ. So thank you all for continuing to play. Hopefully you'll see me make my way back up at least to compete with DJ and Varun. But that's a wrap to our fantasy league, and that's a wrap to this week's episode. So as always, find us at One Tip One Hand on all the social medias. We'll be back next week to hopefully talk about Delhi in the top half of the table and maybe talk about Mumbai still going winless, but who knows? Let's see how it goes. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next week.